I'm always on the lookout for a new charge controller, a new inverter, something that I can use, something that I can play around with, something that I can sell because I do have a little DIY solar store here. And this charge controller is one that I've used a lot. I've sold over a hundred of these. And while they're inefficient, they're about 75% efficient when they're under heavy loads, they do work well and they're reliable. And uh, something that I haven't realized before is that they don't seem to thermal throttle. Um, now their fan will kick on and just sit there and run and run and run and it's quite loud and it'll get pretty hot, but it'll continue putting out current. Works well, but they are apparently going to discontinue this model from what I understand. So I've been talking with my supplier and he wants me to try out a new charge controller. So this is the new charge controller. I think this one's like the HHJ60 and it's been around for like a decade or more. This one just came out, I think last year, and this is the Pro 60 amp model. Um, now it does have some things that are nice. So one, the uh, wires down here, we have, um, what are they? Five gauge is what you could fit in here. I've managed to fit some four gauge in just barely into the terminals. Whereas on the old charge controller, you had just 10 gauge. And so what they did is they gave you two slots for positive, two slots for negative in order to do, you know, cause 10 gauge is good for what, 40 amps. So it'd be good for 80 amps total on your wire. And that's a little bit annoying to have to run two wires onto a single lug. It did work though. So that's an advantage here. We've just got one lug per and we can do up to five gauge. So six gauge wire would work nicely. Solar usually doesn't need something that thick, but the battery does. Trying to do a single 10 gauge wire on battery, that would get toasty trying to go 60 amps. Anyway, so that is nice, but I've been playing around with it and um, it seems to be working okay until it gets warm. I want to show you what it does when it gets warm. So I was going to talk about the temperature throttling on this thing. And as I'm looking at it, what I'm actually seeing is some other problem. So check this out real quick. This here is our battery voltage. We're at 12 and a half volts. If we scroll through here, we can see that our, we're set to lithium and we're at 14.4 is what it should be going to. Work mode is at seven. That means it's in float mode, which first of all, isn't a thing when you're in lithium. It should be a constant current, constant voltage up to 14.4 volts, but it shows that it's in float mode, but it's at 12 and a half volts. So it should not be in float. So what the heck is it floating to? And we're showing 27 amps when just a few minutes ago, we were up at 40 something amps. So it's obviously throttled down, but it doesn't appear to be thermal throttling because it's only at 45 Celsius and thermal throttling starts at 58 Celsius. Okay, so I misspoke. Seven is absorption mode, not floating mode, but still it should be in mode four, which is MPPT because it still needs to charge this battery before it puts it in absorption. Right now the battery is almost dead. Okay, so I wanna reboot it, but I don't have a switch between the charge controller and the battery. I do have a switch up here. So this is the solar input. So we've got solar is dead, but what I'm going to do is put this Bluetooth module on my BMS and that will allow me to get into the BMS and turn it off. So let's do that real quick. All right. So we rebooted the charge controller. You can see our work mode is three, which is night mode because the solar is off. So let's turn the solar on. Work mode is now four. You can see our current is starting to climb. That's about more like where I expected it, up in the 40s. It's doing its MPPT sweep, I think, here. And it came back up into the 40s. Something that I've seen is a lot of times this, this voltage 28 makes more sense for these panels. They're 45 volt open circuit. So somewhere around 30 would be maximum power point. Um, this will drop down to like 14 something when it's in, um, I guess the mode seven for absorption or it goes into overheat mode. So this is showing 47 amps and 41. I think that's your efficiency difference. That's somewhere around 87% efficient, which isn't ridiculously bad, but 
effect. It gets worse as more power is coming in. And we're only at 43 Celsius, so let's see what it does here after a few minutes. Um, right now I don't have anything on, but the battery's down in the like low 13s, so it's got plenty to charge, and that's like a 120 amp hour battery. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave the little inverter off. Oh my goodness, it already did it. Look at that, work mode 7.0 for absorption. All right, so I'm gonna go back through these settings because maybe I got something wrong. So you can see the solar panel voltage has dropped to 14.5, and I think it's doing that um, some some controllers will raise the voltage in order to lower the power. This one seems to lower the voltage in order to lower the power coming in, which, um, I don't know, I guess at that point you get more current on the solar wires, uh, but less work being done in the controller. Um, I don't know. Now, obviously I'm much more familiar with this controller, right? And if I wanna go program this, I can go into here and this is for the uh, load output, which I don't use. Um, this is D1 and D2. So D1 is the float voltage. D2 is the um, boost or maximum voltage. And then you've got D4, which is lithium or lead acid. So one is lithium. And so with lithium, all it does is it ignores D1. And all it does is it'll charge up to this voltage. And as soon as it reaches 14.5, it starts dropping current in order to stay at 14.5. And that works beautifully. And then on here, all I do to change it is click enter, change it, hold enter, escape, and then turn it off. Wait about five seconds and turn it on. And then you can go in and check change to 14.5 but on this one in order to change so one you've actually got different modes in here so this is lithium iron phosphate so in order to change this setting i would hold this button now it's blinking so now i can change to flooded sel gel user or lithium and then this is to save and then now it looks like it's got two different settings at 14.4 you can't really see that it's changing because all they do is show that it's 14.4 but they don't tell you what setting that is which to me is really annoying at least over here it's got a d02 next to it over here it's like you have to guess um that doesn't make any sense to me that you have to guess but i think what they've done is just like over here d02 is 14.5 d01 is 13.8 but really it's just looking at 14.5 all they did is set the float and the boost at 14.4 and this is the low voltage cutoff. And this is the actual battery voltage. So that's a status screen instead of a setting screen. That's how much current is coming into the battery, according to the controller anyway. That's how hot this controller is. And then I don't even know what this is. Maybe a temperature compensation value. So I, I might have to play with that and see if it changes, but should there even be an absorption mode for lithium? So let's go ahead and try changing this into user. So once it's in user, I can now change these values. So earlier when it was in lithium, I could try and change this, but it wouldn't change. So let's go to 14.4 and this one's also gonna be 14.4. I'm guessing that this is the float since it was a lower value to start with. And then we've got low voltage cutout, then actual voltage, amperage, temperature, and then whatever that is, the C. Okay, nothing changed. So let's reboot the controller. So first this, which actually, I mean, it should go into night mode, right? That should reset what it's doing. But let's see if it goes into night mode, which I think is 3.0. I don't know how long it takes to do that. There it goes. All right, so now it's in night mode. So now let's turn it back on. You can see the wattage starting to come up. So that's it back in MPPT mode. And we should be able to see how much current's coming through. 
Um, I did see, that's weird. I would think that you'd be able to go down with this button, but no, you have to scroll through with the left button. Um, but look, it's already back in seven, we know. I wonder if, I'm gonna try this again by looking at the, that's the actual voltage. So we're gonna do this again. Solar off. I'm wondering if the voltage is spiking and it's coming back down into the mode seven. But let's see, we're gonna go back into night mode. Okay, solar back on. See how high the battery voltage gets here. Yeah, I got up to like 13 something and then it dropped back down. Oh no, that was probably just it sweeping for MPPT. But yeah, we're back in work mode seven. So not charging the battery like it should. Let's check the voltage at the charge controller terminals. So let's set this to voltage DC. And then we'll put our leads up in here. I'll even do it with positive and negative correctly. 13.6. So certainly not high enough to hit that 14.4, unless internally there's something uh, much higher resistance that's causing it to think that it should be in float mode. But that's a little messed up. Okay, so what the heck? Now it's showing 14.4 volts is what the battery's at. And the only thing I changed was this C. So I wonder if this is a compensation, like the controller is seeing the wrong voltage. So you're trying to adjust what it's actually seeing because if we go to where we see the current battery voltage, we're at 14.4. And yet if I set my multimeter to DC volts, plug my leads into where the battery's at, I'm at 13.5. So let me set that number to 13.5 and see what happens then. So let's go look at voltage. It drops some. So now we're reading 13, no, there's 13.5. So let's put our leads back in. Am I, why am I reading nothing? Oh, there we go, 13.6. So 13.5-ish there, 13.6 here. So now it's much closer, but we're still in absorption mode for whatever reason, and we're only pulling 24 amps, we should be getting over 40 amps with where the solar panels are at right now. And you can see our solar voltage is 14.9. Okay, so now that I changed all that, so right now we've got our um, compensation at 13.5. We're using the user settings at 14.4 and 14.3 volts. And our battery is currently at 13.5. We're gonna shut off solar and then I'm gonna shut off the battery. See, it didn't say anything that I saw in the manual that you had to reboot the controller in order for this to work, but with the old controller, you definitely had to reboot for the setting to take, which is a good reason to have a switch between the controller and the battery so that you can reboot it. Not that you need to reboot it after it's running because it should just stay running, but anyway. All right, so our battery voltage is up at 14.2. We're hitting 40 volt, 40 amps. Are we doing the MPPT sweep or are we failing? Look at that, we're back in mode seven, work mode seven, which is where we're trying to avoid being. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my C setting here and set this to 14.4 for whatever reason. And then we're gonna reboot everything. All right, so we're booting back up, turn the solar back on. And we're already in work mode seven, what the heck? Don't even have any current flowing yet. There we go. And yeah, 
and now it's showing the battery at 14.4. And so it's acting like it's, it definitely acting like absorption mode now, where it's just trying to keep the battery voltage at 14.4 and matching the current in order to do that. I've only got so much time to futz around with this, and I did go ahead and pull it apart. I didn't see anything that's obviously wrong, like solder joints down here or anything. It's not terribly neat on the other side for the soldering. Um, so, I don't know. But I do see, look at that, there's a place for a fan. There's a lot of places on this motherboard that are not populated, you can see down here. So it's obviously made, like I think down here it's labeled USB. Um, so obviously it can be populated to be a more complicated board, which is fine. I don't mind it being an uncomplicated board, but it needs to actually operate the way it's supposed to. And as it is, it is only charging at 445 watts, 33 amps. And just to give you an idea of what I've got going on here, these are 340 watt panels. So that one, that one, and that one are all connected in parallel. So the voltage is about 45 volts open circuit, 340 watts a piece. What's that about a thousand watts worth of um, power. And you can see where these shadows are sitting that they're getting beautiful sunlight right now. And I should be getting at least seven or 800 watts, but no, I'm only getting what, 447 because it appears that it's in the work mode of 7.0. But don't worry, this doesn't discourage me from trying new things. It's just a matter of this one's done. I might try and see if I can get my hundred bucks back and on to another one. For now, I did go ahead and order more of these charge controllers and I'd like to find something that's a little bit better um, without having to spend like three to $600 on a charge controller. But this might just be what I have to stick with for now.